Hey guys, in today's video I'm going to be showing you some tips and tricks that will make you faster at the 4x4 using the Yao method and it will make it a bit easier for you guys to solve it. So first of all, you obviously need to be able to solve a 4x4 using the Yao method. If you don't know the Yao method, I recommend you go into my channel and find my tutorial on it before you watch this video. I also recommend that you are confident with Yao and can get solves sub 2 minutes Otherwise, this video might confuse you a little bit. Okay, so the first useful kind of tip or trick is when we have already built the first two centres and three white edges, and we are starting to solve the last four centres. Now this is the most difficult part of the R method, and for most people it takes the most amount of time. So what we can do to speed this part of the solve up is we can move the white side as well as the yellow side as long as we don't mess up the edges we have already made so instead of only using these three layers and the U layer we can turn the white layer so we can free up different layers such as the F layer and the back layer it does take quite a lot of getting used to and you will probably slow down a bit when you first try it but it really does help and it makes such a big difference than just moving the R and U layers. So for example if I wanted to match this piece up with this piece I would have to move the R layer up, turn it back down again and then match up. Whereas what we could do to match this up with this is we could move this layer down, make it an F so we're not messing up these pieces and then match them up. So we have these edges still built and we have these now matched up. So instead of having to move the whole three R layers we can simply move the L layer, do whatever we need to do and then move it back. So the next tip for you guys is when we are making the last white edge. Now normally when we make the first three edges we put two of them in the right place and the third one in the wrong place. So we can put in the fourth one without a problem. But we can put all three of the first white edges in the right place. And I'll show you why. So I'm going to put this orange one into the correct place. So now we don't have to remember which edge is in the wrong place. Now normally what we would do is we would set up the last white edge like so. And then slice. But because we put them all in the right place that's not going to work anymore. So what we do instead is we slice first, then put in the edge and slice back. And then we can just simply move up the edge without messing up any of the centers. This is a lot easier than putting in one wrong edge because we don't have to remember which edge is wrong. And it saves us having to move out any other edges and we can just put it in without a problem. So the next part is edge pairing and this concerns look ahead. Now this comes naturally with practice so many of you will probably use this already. But the idea is that as you put in each edge for edge pairing, you look for the next piece after the one you are putting in. So for example I'm going to start with the green and orange. So I find that edge which is up here and I see the piece next to it which is red and green. So as I'm putting in this edge, I'm looking for the red and green, and I found it here. So then I look for the red and green, I found it here, and the piece next to it is orange and yellow. So as I'm putting in the red and green edge, I'm looking for the orange and yellow. And I found it over here, and it just happens that it is already in the right place. So we match up, and it works on the way back as well. So I see the blue and orange. So I look for the blue and orange, and it's here. So as I'm putting it in, I see the blue and yellow, so I'm looking for the blue and yellow as well. So as that goes in, I found the blue and yellow here, and I see that next to blue and yellow, we have blue and orange, uh, red. So I put that in, and I find the blue and edge up here, and I put that one in. Then when we match up the edges again, it's done, and then we have the last two edges to do. So. It is quite hard to get the hang of and you might slow down to start with but it makes a big difference from just stopping and looking for another edge and you are thinking all the time. It does really help to fill those gaps when you aren't moving so it is really really useful to do. 
So the last tip that I have for you guys is also joint edge pairing. And this is when you need an edge that is already in use while trying to pair up. So for example, I want to start by matching up the orange and blue. So I find the orange and blue edge, which is up here. So I put it down. Then I see the next edge, which is red and blue. So I find the red and blue, but that's down here. And we can't use this edge because we're already using it to match up these two edges. So what we can do is we can push this piece away from the edge that we're using. Then what we do is we replace it with a broken edge. So now it's in the top layer. Then we push the layer back. So we still have these two matched up and we still have this piece up here. So then we find the piece and we can continue with edge pairing. And as you can see, now we have these two which can easily match up. Now, do bear in mind that we can only do this on the first three edges when we're doing the slice first. If we do it on the second set of three edges when we're going to be moving the slice back, it won't work because we have some built edges up here already and it will mess up the edges that we have already made. So we do need to be careful that we only do it on the first three edges. And if we do get that case on the second three edges, we do just need to put in a random edge. Now this does really help because it saves us having to put in a random edge and it saves a lot of time for us having to put in different edges, find different edges, and then we have to do the process different times. So it does really help and it's a really, really good method to get into the habit of. Anyway guys, those are my tips and tricks for getting faster at the Yao method. I hope you found this video helpful and if you have any useful tips for Yao that you've come up with, feel free to leave a comment or send me a personal message. If you have any questions about this video or Yao in general, again leave a comment or send me a personal message. Anyway guys, this has been some tips and tricks for how to get faster at the Yao method. Thanks for watching.